I was a student at Presentation College San Fernando in 1963, and an advertisement came out in the papers that was put, placed there by Carney Limited uh, for persons to be selected to go abroad to be trained in mechanical engineering, uh, to be a chemist, and in TNFED engineer, and also in agriculture in four categories at that time. Started the work, as I said, on the 1st of April, 1964. The initial plan was for me to spend a year at St. Martin Sugar Factory to get a full in-depth understanding of engineering and the technology used in sugar, in the manufacture of sugar. It was uh, shortened prematurely and I left for the United Kingdom in August, 1964. We were sent to the UK for three years to, to get our academic studies and consistent with what, it, what Tate and I concept of engineering is. And it was an integrated approach of practical training as well as academic training. On completion of the training and academic studies in 1967, we returned to Trinidad. I was assign, assigned to Brecon Castle Factory. Uh, this was in 19, late 1967 where I worked under Mr. Ahmad Khan, who subsequently moved through the ranks as, uh, and became uh, production manager of factories. He replaced Russell Waterspoon as production manager of factories. That was the name of the title in those days. Carrying Limited was still mainly expatriates, right? Mainly all the senior positions were held by foreigners. Returning back to, to, to St. Madeline, St. Madeline started to work there as a senior shift engineer in my first wet season, I was put in charge of the small mill. The culture and the traditions at St. Madeline were totally different to Brecon Castle, mainly because St. Madeline was owned by the St. Madeline Sugar Company, formerly known as the Henry Dubesson Sugar Company, and it was acquired by Tate and Lyle in 1963. I worked there uh, till 1974. And then I was, the, the company came with a new structure that you would have shift managers and then an engineer and a chemist below the shift manager, which was a restructuring of the traditional system where you had an a, a engineer on one side and the chemist on the other side. But you had nobody with overall responsibility for the factory. Each person looking after its own, their own department's interests, which at times may be in conflict with the overall factory interests. Uh, now, whereas that system may have worked well in the past, it was becoming a little bit self-evident that the system is not really viable, and perhaps you could look at another management model engineer. So you had mechanical engineer and production engineer. It was implemented in BC as a pilot project, and on that basis, I was requested to come up to BC factory to be one of the newly created positions of the shift manager. We, we were getting restless over the salaries that we were getting as engineers. And we had worked out the number of hours we have to work per month. Now in those days, we used to work in crop time, seven days, seven evenings, seven nights, seven days shift. And then the cycle repeats itself right through the crop. In those days, the crop used to go to the end of June, sometimes the first week in July, because they had the cane there. And there was no payment for overtime at all, right? Myself and the then corporate planner, right, work together many weekends and prepare a plan in which we had that way you would have a phase close here at Brecon Castle factory, right, but it would be phased over a five year, six year period and the sections that were being closed down over a five year, six year period, you would, you would be doing, while you're doing that, you would be doing uh, age and skill profiles of the workers in the various sections like Esperanza section and so on to see who are capable or who are available to be trained, who have the skills to be acquired tra trains, uh, training and skills that will make them marketable in a certain context. Concurrent which alternative jobs will be found for those who are interested and those who, who by, by, the, by the age and skill profile they carry out would be identified for who is suitable for training to acquire marketable skills. Uh, another facet of that is that financial incentives was going to be given to the business community to put up factories 
labor-intensive factories in these areas. So you'd have things like garment factories and, and so on. And we were very proud of the document. It was accepted by, by, by management. It went to the board and the board took it to the cabinet. Unfortunately, up to this day, we never heard anything about it.